story time about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So a little background information, I was 14 and in 8th grade. And there was this boy that I really liked who lived like 10 minutes away from me. So the one night he asked me if I wanted to hang out. And my mom was strict about me not hanging out with people after 7 o'clock at night. Especially a boy. I wasn't even allowed to hang out with boys. And my grandma, my mom, and my brother and I all lived together. And we all had our own rooms. Mine was on the first floor of the house, so I snuck out the window and I went and hung out with him. So I snuck out at around 3 and came back at around 4 a.m. And my grandma comes into my room to wake me up for school. And I guess that I had been laying on my side and my hair was like pulled up. Because literally all I remember waking up to is her smacking me up out of my sleep and screaming at me. Because there was a hickey on my neck. She's like, I'm telling your mom whenever she gets home. Your window's gonna be screwed shut. And I keep telling her it's not a hickey so she calls my brother over. And he's like, yeah, that's definitely a hickey. Because he likes to kiss her ass. Like for part two. Part two about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So like I said, she's like, I'm telling your mom and I keep telling her that it's not a hickey. And thankfully, my mom already went to work. She had work at 6 a.m. So I got on the bus, I go to school, and I'm talking to my friend and telling her about how I'm literally going to be crucified whenever I get home. And she told me about how her older sister was in like the same situation that I'm in now. So she texted her older sister asking what she did because she never got caught. And I was like, okay, well, if she used makeup, my mom's going to find out because she's not dumb. Well, apparently her older sister burnt herself with a curling iron. Yes, literally burnt herself, but she ended up getting away with it. So fast forward, I get home at around 3 o'clock and I sneak in through the back door so that way my grandma won't see that I came in the house because she literally would have made me sit in the living room until my mom got home. So I go upstairs and I burn myself with a curling iron, which is not fun. Like for part 3. Part three about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So like I said, I snuck in through the back door so that way my grandma wouldn't see me because if she saw me, she would have made me wait in the living room with her until my mom got home. So, you know, burnt myself with a curling iron and my mom gets home. And since I'm on the first floor, I can literally hear my grandma talking to my mom and my brother, of course. My grandma's like, yeah, she has hickeys all over her neck. Which is literally an exaggeration because there was one, one small one. So my mom calls me out to the living room. I go out and she's like, all right, show it to me. And I'm like, show you what? She's like, don't play stupid. Your grandma already told me the whole situation. And I was like, mom, I literally burnt myself with a curling iron. And my grandma's like screaming and freaking out because I'm lying. She's like, you better tell your mother the truth right now. Da -da 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 -da. So I show the burn to my mom. She looks at my grandma and she's like, so you're going to tell me that's not a burn on her neck? And she was like, that's not how it looked this morning, blah, blah, blah. So I got away with it. But now my grandma literally stalks me to see if I'm doing anything wrong so she can tell my mom. Story time, I became a stepmom at 22 and my stepkids hate me. So a little background information, I was 22 and working at Hooters and I had this one regular who literally came in every single day that I worked. I mean, it wasn't really creepy because I did give him my schedule because he tipped really well, but that's besides the point. The one night he asked me out and obviously I knew that he was going to pay for our dinner, so I said yes because I was hungry and I did not want to pay for food. So anyways, I go on this date and I actually end up really liking him just to find out that he is 40 years old. Fast forward a few months, we start dating, and he realizes that I still live at home with my mom and dad. So he's like, oh, like, you can move in with me, but first you need to meet my kids. And I, like, thought that his kids were going to be, like, two and three years old. No, when I went over to dinner the one night at their house, there were four kids who were literally all above the age 13. And every single one of the girls gave me a death stare as I sat down in my chair, like for part two. Part two about how I became a stepmom at 22 and my stepkids hate me. So like I said, we're all sitting down in the dining room and there's four kids. There's one boy, three girls. The one boy is 14 and all the other girls are 15, 16, and 19. And we're going to call my boyfriend James. James is like, okay, well, I'm going to go back to the kitchen and finish cooking. You guys should bond a little bit. So he leaves me alone with these little fucking roaches and they just start firing shots at me. They're like, you're a gold digger, aren't you? Don't worry, my dad will never marry you so you're not gonna get any of his money. So after that, I told James that they need to warm up to me a little bit more before I move in. So for the next month, we would try to plan things with the kids. But anytime that I was going to be there, every single one of them would be like, we're not going, we hate her. Eventually, James just kind of said, fuck it, and he asked me to marry him. So I moved in, and then a week later, we got married. His kids didn't show up to the wedding, and James had to go on a work trip. So I was moving some of my stuff into the house from the car, and the kids fucking locked me out of the house. This has all been within the span of five months. What should I do? time about how i stole my best friend's boyfriend so a little background information i was 14 and in eighth grade 
and we're gonna call my best friend Ashley. Ashley was really nice at first. She always had my back when I needed her, but then out of nowhere, she started being super rude to me. She turned into one of those pick me girls that would always make fun of you in front of other guys, talk crap about you to the guy that you liked. Well, the one day I hear her talking shit about me whenever we were in class and everybody could hear her. She was literally on the whole other side of the class. And I asked her, hey, like, why were you talking about me? She was like, no, I was talking about a different girl. And I had a pretty unique name. So I was like, who else in the school could you have been talking about? But I just brushed it off. Well, then we were in algebra class and I heard her talking shit about me again. How I do my makeup so bad and I can never get a boyfriend. Like I'm so ugly and all that stuff. Well, she thought that I wasn't mad at her. So she came up to me the one day and was like, OMG, I have a boyfriend. Like for part two. Part two about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So like I said, she would talk shit about me all the time. And I only confronted her that one time. So she thought that we were all good. So the one day before class starts, she runs up to me. She's like, oh my God, you'll never guess what? I have a boyfriend. She's like, he's so cute. He's really popular. He's on the football team. And I was like, girl, whatever. Nobody cares. Until I'm sitting in my first class of the day. And I remember that she made out with my boyfriend last year. I forgave her, of course. But because karma was taking a little bit too long, I figured I had to do something about it myself. So my plan was to hook up with her boyfriend. Do I feel bad about it? Absolutely not. So I went to my school's football game and guess who I saw? My best friend's boyfriend. She couldn't make it that night. She had something to do. So I had him all to myself. So I went up to him. I started flirting with him. And I was like, oh, you should break up with your girlfriend and date me instead. But then he was like, I thought you guys were best friends and I would never date you. Like for part... Part three about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So like I said, I went to the football game. She wasn't there because she had something else to do. I went up to him. I started flirting. I told him that he should break up with her and date me instead. And I also said that she was a bitch and a whole bunch of other stuff. And he was like, why would you say that about your best friend? And he was like, I would never date you. And I had a feeling this would happen. So I had photoshopped a picture of her and this guy that she sits next to in her lab class. And I showed it to him and I was like, see, she's cheating on you. So he was pissed off. He gave me his number. And the next day he came over to my house. We cuddled, watched movies. We kissed. After three months, Ashley found out. We hadn't talked to each other since then. But now I am 16 in 10th grade and still with her ex-boyfriend. Funny thing though, the picture that I photoshopped with her and that guy, she's literally dating him now. So you're welcome, I guess. But anyway, she still goes around talking shit on me. I mean, who can blame her? I did steal. Story time about how my fiance cheated on me with 10 other girls. So a little background information, I met this guy on Instagram and we're gonna call him Bryce. Now, when him and I met, he was stationed in Korea and he refused to ask me to be his girlfriend until he came home. So I waited an entire year for him to ask me to be his girlfriend. Which low-key should have been a red flag, but he made it seem romantic in some twisted weird way. So fast forward, he comes home in February, and he kept to his promise. The first day that we met, he asked me to be his girlfriend. So I say yes, fast forward. Him and I start having a ton of arguments because of things that he was doing while he was in Korea. Fast forward, we're officially together for nine months. So fast forward, of course he gets deployed to Europe in like September of 2022. So this man decides that he's going to propose to me in July and then beg me to get married to him before he leaves. Now, I may have ignored the first red flags, but I'm not dumb, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me with 10 other girls. So like I said, this man begs me to get married to him before he leaves. And thank goodness I didn't because divorce papers would have been served the same day. So fast forward, he starts acting super weird. He's going out 24-7. He's getting drunk. He's not wearing the ring that he begged me to get him. Yes, he literally begged me for a ring so that way women would know that he had a girlfriend. Well, then of course I get a DM from a girl on Instagram asking if him and I were still together. And then after talking to her, I realized he literally made a Tinder two days after he got deployed. And what was his excuse? Oh, I wanted to meet friends to teach me German. And listen, I was not born last night, so I kept that conversation going because I wanted to get to the bottom of what the fuck was actually going on. And then, of course, he finally comes clean that he cheated on me with a bunch of girls. Oh, and you want to know the icing on the cake? One of them was a minor. Yup. After I leave him, he has the audacity to ask for my ring back, but I threatened to tell Story time about how I got pregnant by my boyfriend's younger brother and he still doesn't know. So a little background information, I am 19 years old and I am in college. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for about two years and we're going to call him Josh. The two years that we've been dating have been super rocky because he would try to hook up with other girls. Well, 
no, actually, he wouldn't try. He would hook up with other girls. And then, you know, him and I would break up and then we would get back together. You know, just your usual toxic relationship. The main reason why I kept going back to him was because he was super popular. And this made me feel like I was never going to find anybody better than him, so on and so forth. Now, Josh's brother is 21 years old, and somehow, someway, him and I started hooking up. Right around after the time I found out that my boyfriend was cheating on me with my cousin. Yes, my cousin. I'm saying that like I'm not hooking up with his brother. Um, anyways. Well, one day I realized that I haven't gotten my period in two months, so I took a pregnancy test, and it came back positive. Like for part two. Part two about how I got pregnant by my boyfriend's younger brother, and he still doesn't know. So, like I said, my boyfriend cheated on me with my cousin, and somehow that led to me hooking up with his younger brother. Well, fast forward, one day I realized that I haven't gotten my period in two months, so I took a pregnancy test and it came back positive, of course. And the first thing that I did was go to Josh's brother because him and I were hooking up way more than my boyfriend and I were within the past few months. Well, we both came to the conclusion that I should just tell my boyfriend that it's his and see what happens from there. So I told my boyfriend I'm pregnant and he was super happy, he gave me this whole speech about how he's going to be a better boyfriend for me and the baby, which in simpler terms pretty much means, yay babe, I'm going to stop cheating on you since you're pregnant, but only because you're pregnant. So now my boyfriend is raising my one-year-old daughter who he thinks is his and I'm still hooking up with his brother. Story time about my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend. So a little background information. So his ex-girlfriend's parents, they owned a security company which sold cameras, alarms, and a few other things. So at the end of 2019, my boyfriend broke up with his ex-girlfriend. And by March of 2020, he started seeing me. And at first, we were just keeping things on the down low. Anyways, so after maybe three weeks of seeing my boyfriend, his ex sent me an Instagram message calling me a slut. It's the obsession for me. Anyways, what's even weirder is that she knew everything about my boyfriend and I. Even the sexual things. Anyways, like I said, I thought that was really weird, so everything that she had sent me, I sent straight to him. Because I thought, obviously, that he had still been talking to her and had told her everything about us. But instantly, he gave me his phone and said go through it, and he had her blocked on everything. So even though it was weird, we moved on from that situation. Well, fast forward another two weeks, and his ex calls him while I'm at his house. Like for part two. Story time about how this girl and her boyfriend beat me up. So a little background information, I was in 11th grade and I was 17 years old. And in the summer, my friend and I went to go and watch fireworks for the 4th of July at this park. And most of the people there went to a completely different school. But we ended up meeting this group of guys and I was really vibing with the one guy who was there. He was super cute, super chill, and we got along great. And I just want to put this out there, I did not think to ask that he had a girlfriend because he was being super flirtatious and just really wasn't acting like he had a girlfriend. I literally just hate how we have to ask people if they're in relationships now because they don't want to be honest or loyal. And then we will look like the bad guys because they were dishonest. Anyway, so him and I start to hang out a lot and he really likes me. I really like him. And we went to this football game at his school and we ended up doing the nasty. Well, after that, I'm in the bleachers with my friends and one of my friends tells me, yeah, he has a girlfriend. He says, you couldn't have told me this before we did the nasty. Anyways, like for part two about how this guy and his girlfriend literally beat me up so like i said him and i did the nasty at the football game and then i go onto the bleachers with my friends and she tells me that he has a girlfriend but i'm not gonna lie at this point we had already been talking for two months and i really didn't care because i liked him and i wasn't just gonna turn my feelings off first of all i do not owe that girl any loyalty number two we were already intimate with each other so i don't know what could make this situation worse than it already was I mean, I did confront him about it, and he told me that he was going to break up with her for me. So I believed him. I was like, whatever, I'm just going to wait for him to break it off with her, and I'm still going to talk to him. So eventually, he literally made me wait for like two more months. So what did I do? I told his girlfriend everything. I'm not going to lie, it's not even that I wanted to be a good person. It was literally just to spite him. It's like, yeah, your man wants to be with me. He don't want you. This is the text messages of him telling me that he was going to break up with you. That day, he called me, and he was like, hey, do you want to... Story time about how I almost got kidnapped at a grocery store. So a little background information, I was 16 and it was during the summertime. And I was super excited because I had just got my license. But my parents had this idea that if they made me drive around and do all their errands, that I would be a better driver. So I was pretty much like their B-I-T-C-H. Anyway, so the one night my mom wanted to make this recipe that she saw on TikTok. And she didn't have the right seasonings for it. So who did she tell to go to the store? Yours truly, me. And on Sundays, the mini market that was in our town would close at 4 o'clock. So I had to drive like 30 minutes away to the nearest Target. And when I got there, I had to park in the back. Because they had like 10 handicap spaces up front. 
another 10 for when you sit there and they bring your shit out to you, and another 5 whenever you're picking something up that you already ordered. But in all honesty, that didn't bother me because I had never heard about any girls getting trafficked at a grocery store. Like for part 2. Part 2 about how I almost got kidnapped at a grocery store. So like I said, I parked all the way in the back of the parking lot. I mean, okay, not all the way in the back, but I was damn near close. So I go in and I'm not too familiar with this Target. I've only been here a few times because the mini market in my hometown is usually the one that I go to. So I'm looking around and I realize that there's this little girl following me. But it seemed like she was more like keeping an eye on me. Like she would stand like 20 feet behind me, but just like stare at me, you know, peek through the aisles. And she had did that for like 10 minutes. But whenever I finally went up to the checkout, she was gone and this woman came up to me. She was like, oh my gosh, have you seen my daughter? She was running around the store. I don't know where she is. So I described the little girl to her that I saw. And she was like, yeah, that's her. I can't find her. Will you please help me look for her? And I didn't have the time for this because my parents were going to wring my neck. But I said a part three about how I was almost kidnapped at a grocery store. So like I said, she asked me to help look for her daughter. And I was like, I'm going to go tell a Target employee. And she was like, no, don't worry. They're all already looking. They have security all over the place. And she was like, will you help me check the parking lot? Because I don't know if she left. She was like, I've been having them look for the past 10 minutes. So I didn't think anything of this because I didn't think that some lady would try to kidnap me. So I went into the parking lot with her and I'm like, okay, where do you think she would have went? Like, did you drive here? Did she maybe go to the car? And she was like, no, we live like five minutes down the road. Do you think that we could get in your car and drive around? And I said, yeah, because I thought that it would speed up the process. And my dad's truck was really high off the ground. So while we're walking, I'm like, I think someone's under my car. And she was like, what? No, 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 no. It's probably just the shadow. And I'm like, no, there's someone under my car. So I turn around to walk back into the store and she starts like pulling my arm towards my car. So an employee called the police whenever I went in there. And long story short, they were trying to kidnap me. Story time. My boyfriend cheated on me with the girl best friend. So a little background information. I was 17 and a junior in high school. And my boyfriend and I had been dating for a year. But just a little backstory about when we got together. So there were definitely some red flags that I missed, okay? One of them being that he had a girl best friend. And I don't care what y'all have to say if that makes me insecure or what. But coming from someone who has been the girl best friend, I knew this was not good at all. Especially whenever we first started dating and she was still being super friendly with him. Meaning she would hold his hand, she would hang on him 24-7. And when I told him I was super uncomfortable with that and I felt like there needed to be some boundaries. He was like, um, yeah, I told you what it was whenever we got together. So if you don't like that, then just break up with me. Looking back on it now, that was also a red flag. Because I feel like he was telling me to break up with him so that way he didn't have to break up with me. Like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me with the girl best friend. So like I said, she would still hang all over him and he pretty much told me, if you don't like that, then you can leave. Obviously, I did not want to leave because I liked him and he was my boyfriend. So I just kept putting up with it and eventually, you know, we got six months into our relationship. So at that point, I'm thinking maybe I have a little bit more authority, you know, to be like, hey, I don't like the way that she acts around you. You guys can't hang out like that anymore. And they would hang out alone together. He would take her to dinner. Which I literally tried telling him that the stuff that they do together is relationship stuff. And he was like, that's not true at all because we did all this stuff before you and I even got together. So anyways, like I said, six months in, I'm like, hey, I don't like the way that you guys are hanging around each other. Once again, he gives me the same excuse. So he pretty much said that he didn't care. And the one night him and I were supposed to hang out, but he canceled on me last minute. And her and I didn't get along and she never Snapchatted me before. But then I get a Snapchat of her and him making out at his house. Part three about why I will never, ever, ever babysit ever again. So like I said, I picked up the stack of towels and a camera that was recording fell out of it. And while I was home later that night, I was waiting for my mom to get home when I got a call from Will. And if you don't remember who that is, that's Autumn's dad. And of course I wasn't going to answer the phone because I was super weirded out and low-key scared. But then he left a voicemail. And he was like, hey, so um, I know you have the camera. And this is kind of awkward, but I'm going to need it back. I can pay you whatever you want. And I would prefer that we don't tell anybody about this. Sometimes I'm just really amazed at how stupid people are because as soon as my mom got home, I showed her the camera and I let her listen to the voicemail. So my mom called over Autumn's mom. So they called the police and Autumn's mom kept trying to call Will, but his phone was going straight to voicemail. 
And she was like, yeah, he begged me not to come over here whenever you called. It's been a week since this happened and Autumn's dad is currently running from the cops. Story time about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So a little background information. I was 14 years old and had just started my freshman year of high school. And my brother and his girlfriend were both seniors. And we're going to call his girlfriend Riley. Now, Riley and my brother started dating in the middle of the summer. And you would think since they just started dating and basically just met each other that I wouldn't know her that well. But literally two days after they started dating, she started spending every single day at my house. I'm being serious. Like she had a whole duffel bag that had basically her closet in it. But that wasn't the problem. So in the summertime, my parents would plan a lot of family activities. And since they were called family activities, his girlfriend wasn't allowed to go. I mean, I think she would have been allowed to go, but she was also really disrespectful to my mom. So after one of our family days, my parents asked my brother if Riley would be joining us for dinner. And he just ignored them and went up to his room. And my room's right next to his so I could hear everything. And Riley called him like for part two. Part two about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So like I said, my room was right next to my brother so I could literally hear everything. And I guess Riley called him and she was complaining about me. She was like, she's the reason why your mom doesn't like me. I feel like she's jealous of me. She doesn't want us to be together. Which was really weird because I didn't give a fuck about what my brother did. So fast forward, school finally starts. And Riley lived about 20 minutes away from us. So my brother told her that he couldn't go and pick her up for school every day. But obviously I would ride to school with him because we lived together. Anyways, eventually she had a problem with that too. So my brother and I had to start leaving 30 minutes early to get to school so we could pick her up. So the first time that we pick her up, we pull up to her house. And obviously I'm in the front seat and she's just standing there. So my brother rolls down the window and he's like, get in the fucking car. We're going to be late. And then she literally has the audacity to start arguing with my brother in front of me about why she should get the front seat instead of me. Like for part three. Part three about why I hated my brother's girlfriend. So like I said, once she got in, she started screaming about how she should get the front seat instead of me. So I turn around and I'm like, last time I checked, you've only been here for two months. Stay in your fucking lane. And then she starts crying because she's like, oh my god, your sister's so mean to me. Like, I just feel like I should have more respect as his girlfriend. So fast forward to the weekend, my mom said that she needs to have a talk with me. And she's like, honey, I know you may not like your brother's girlfriend, but you have to stop being mean to her. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've only had one conversation with her in the last week. And that was to tell her to stay in her fucking lane. And then I told her about everything going on. So she calls my brother down to ask him if it's true. And my brother was pretty pissed off at me, but he wouldn't lie. So my mom said that she was not allowed over the house anymore. And that he wasn't allowed to go pick her up from school until I got my license. So that just caused more problems between her and my brother. So he broke up with her. And then she started spreading rumors that she broke up with him because there was something weird going on between him and I. 